evening, everyone. We are so happy, actually, to welcome you all to this webinar today. Uh, of course, all the webinars that we have been actually organizing since the beginning uh, will actually are uh, where uh, have been very, very uh, on very, very serious issues, of course. And we actually have tried to do so many, uh, I mean, cover so many topics. Well, uh, today we are glad that uh, we have Dr. Alone amongst us and uh, will we would definitely introduce her soon. But uh, before starting the program officially, well, I'd like to uh, welcome you all once again in today's webinar, today's session on how to publish in good journals, actually. Well, uh, before, starting the welcome, before starting the program, let me uh, give you a brief idea about our society about our association, which is TESOL Society of Bangladesh. It started its journey in 2014 as a chapter of global TESOL organizations worldwide. But uh, later, actually, uh, uh, it aimed to create a forum of English language teachers in Bangladesh. It uh, plans to facilitate professional training for English practitioners and aspiring teachers in English. And this forum promises to bring all English language teachers in Bangladesh under one large community. So, uh, of course, this association has been very, very special for all of us. And today, we are very, very happy once again to welcome Dr. Lone for the topic, how to get your research papers published in good journals. Well, uh, let me start with a brief introduction of Dr. Loon, who actually undertook her postgraduate studies in the University of Canberra, Australia, Surinari University of Technology, Thailand. She is now a lecturer of Department of English, Faculty of Education and Educational Innovation, Colossine University, Thailand. Before she moved to Thailand in 2011, she used to be a university lecturer and a teacher educator for more than 10 years in Vietnam. She specializes, specializes in teacher education, written critical feedback, genre analysis, English written discourse, second language writing instruction and research, academic writing, ESL, ESP, professional writing with genre-based approach, citations and reporting verbs. Her publications on these topics can be found in high-impact peer-reviewed international journals. Besides serving as a reviewer and editor and editor-in-chief for the Asian AFL Journal, the Asian ESP Journal, ESP Today Journal, and others, she has served as a chair and a committee member of Thesis Defenses in Thailand, a thesis examiner for PhD thesis from Vietnamese and Australian universities, a supervisor for TESOL master's students in Vietnam, and a co-supervisor for a PhD candidate in Iran. She has also been a keynote plenary and conference speaker at many international conferences and a judge for the international English speech contest for Rajabhad and ASEAN universities. She's sometimes invited to give special lectures and conduct workshops for postgraduate students and lecturers in Bangladesh, Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam. So from this, you can easily understand that she is not new to Bangladesh. She already has been to Bangladesh once uh, in Noakhali University. So she knows our country very well. She is very close to us. And today she's also actually very happy and excited to be a part of the program. Well, our today's topic is how to get your research papers published in good journals, which is definitely a very significant one to discuss. Now, uh, in short, her abstract says that in the contemporary world, one of the most challenging tasks faced by most multilingual scholars, scholars is to publish their research work in English and to spread it across global context. Furthermore, many institutions now only accept and recognize publications in journals indexed in reputable databases. In fact, such pressures have been intensified when the evaluation of and rewards for scholars' academic work are based on their publications in high status citation index journals. Pressures have also heightened for postdoctoral students to publish their research work in such journals. Before, 
finishing their degrees. Having experienced such pressures as a graduate student and a university faculty member, within less than six years, the invited speaker has 20 scoopers or ISI papers. In this webinar, she'll share some of the techniques in getting her research work published in good journals. And uh, the webinar is outlined as follows. Why to publish, how to make our research publishable, how to choose the right journals, how to go through reviewers' comments and rejections. And finally, we would have a question answer session. This webinar is expected to provide the participants with some tactics and inspirations in doing their research, preparing and getting it accepted for publications in reputable journals. So uh, I'd like to welcome Dr. Loon once again and would request her to start this session. Dr. Loon. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Tina, for your nice introduction. And uh, uh, before I start, I would also like to thank uh, Society of Bangladesh for inviting me uh, to conduct this webinar on how to get our research paper published in good journals. Yeah, it's true that it's not my first time to work with an association uh, in Bangladesh. It's my second time indeed. My first time was in 2015 when I did a workshop for master medical student, um, medical master student in a university in Paris. So I had a very good experience uh, with people in your country. I really love people in your country. And it were my great honors to be uh, with you, uh, meeting some of you again here online. So um, yeah, once, once, time, once more time, thank you very much. Thank you very much for including me in this webinar. Okay, thank you. So uh, if you know me outside, so if you see me face to face, or if you can see me clearly on the screen, I, I think you would agree with me that in terms of age, I'm not young anymore. But in terms of publication, I consider myself as a young scholar. It is just because I started to write for publication in about six years, um, in, since 2014, when I did my PhD study. As you know, uh, as a requirement for our graduation from the PhD program, we had to have our research paper published in good journals, the journals that are indexed in the good database recognized by the university. And that's were the start of my writing for publication journeys. Although I have uh, written for publication in about six years, uh, so far I have uh, 20 papers uh, published in journals indexed in Scobat or Web of Science. And um, in my today's sharing session, like Tina has already introduced, I would like to share with you um, my um, experience, my tactics, uh, what I have learned, what I have um, understood, uh, and how I managed to get uh, as many papers published in good journals a year. And I really hope that my sharing would give you some inspiration, some uh, strategies in um, preparing and writing uh, your research paper for publication, especially in the good journals. And I think it's, uh, it's easy, if, easy for you to follow me if you know a little bit about my educational as well as my research background. Oh. And you can see so here, uh, you already know from um, Tina that I am currently a lecturer at uh, Kalisin University, a small university in the northeastern part of the country. Thailand. And uh, I got my three degree from three different countries, as you can see here. Uh, although I did my master program with an Australian university, but I did not have any publication from my master study. It was just because uh, my master program was a co-work based. So I didn't do research. That's why I didn't have any paper published from my master study. And the year gap between my master study and my PhD study were almost 10 years. And during those years, I worked at the university lecturers and the teacher educator in my country, Vietnam. But uh, at that time, university lecturers in my country were not required to, to do research or to write a publication. So I also didn't have any publication uh, at that time. And as I already mentioned at the beginning that I started to write for publication because I was forced to do it for my PhD graduation. And uh, up to now, in about six years of writing for publication, here are the number of research work that I have already published and I have already completed. And you can see from here, uh, so far I have 26 uh, research articles published 
and 20 out of 26 uh, research article were published in uh, journals indexed in Scobet or Web of Science uh, database. And I have two book chapters and a textbook. They were also developed from my research work. And I also uh, have my book chapter published with the publishers indexed in the Web of uh, Science. And my textbook were approved and provided with an ISBN from the National Library of Thailand. And this textbook uh, has been used as a course book for teaching essays writing to uh, English major student at my university since 2017. And currently, I have already got one paper accepted for publication by a Scobat journal, and two papers are under review also in uh, good, I mean, Scobat Web of Science Index journals. And I, uh, during the, the pandemic, I uh, completed three manuscripts, and they are still with me now. And this is my um, areas of research interest. And even though I'm busy, I think like many of you here, we are busy with our duty, our task of teaching, researching, and doing um, academic services. And so far, I have provided a lot of academ academic services to the community, as you can see from here. As Tina already also mentioned that I have served as editors and editor-in-chief for uh, Vitiso International Conference for Sitting since 2017. And I have also been a reviewer for many uh, academic journals in my field. And as uh, you can see in the record on Piplong, uh, part of Web of Science um, a partner, you can see that so far I have reviewed 95 manuscripts submitted to several um, academic journals. And I uh, handle 35 submission as an editor. And besides the uh, task, I were also invited like keynotes, plenary speaker, workshop facilitator, webinars, conductor internationally and nationally in Thailand also. And I supervise um, retro student or survey examination or exam this examiner for a retro student from university in Australia, Vietnam and Thailand. So the question you may have for me now is that, oh, you are so busy or that busy. How come you have many uh, paper, research paper published regularly in good journals a year? So that is the main sharing of my uh, webinar today. So in the following session, I would like to share with you what I have learned, what I have uh, understood in the, the, my journeys of um, preparing and getting my paper published in good journals. So now let's get started. So how we make our research uh, publishable in good journals, that is the big question. But from what I have experienced so far, there's four things that I would like to share with you in order uh, for us to, to, to get our papers accepted for publication in the good journals. The first thing is that uh, to join an ongoing conversation effectively. I think the first is also the most important thing that we need to have in order to get or to, to make the editor accept uh, our paper to be published in the good journals. What I mean when I say an ongoing conversation here is the literature on the topic we would like to, to do the research on. We, we all know that for any research topic uh, we would like to work on, there are at least some or several studies that have already been conducted on that topic by reverse researchers, right? And it means that reverse researchers have already talked about, discussed about that topic. And their topic, their conversation are going, are developing, are growing because people keep doing research on that topic and they are adding the new finding, the new knowledge into uh, the, the literature. So now you would like to join their conversation, their ongoing conversation. You need to look for the appropriate way or the appropriate place where you can situate yourself, where you can position yourself in their ongoing conversation. Let me show you the visual illustration of what I just mentioned. Usually on um, any research topic, they have some key or main research that have been written on the topic. And uh, uh, the later works, the later research would be built on or expanded the major study in some way. Uh, and uh, you can see like this. And this network of the literatures keep growing because people keep doing research on this topic and they keep adding new knowledge into this network of the literatures. So your jobs now 
is to find a place where you can stand in relation to these research, in relation to the reverse researcher who did the research on this topic. If you cannot find a place to stand in this network, this evolving network of the knowledge on the topic you would like to do the research on, you cannot get your paper published for, um, in, especially in the good journals. So that's why for me, in, in order to get our paper accepted for publication in a good journal, it is like we are playing the puzzle game. So in this puzzle game, we have to look for the missing pieces. So uh, in order to complete this game, we have to look at the current, the existing uh, puzzle game in order to see how the missing pieces look like or what shape, what shape they, they are, for example. So this is exactly similar to, to what we need to do in doing the research in order to make our research accepted for publication, especially in the good journals. We need to find the research gap. We need to find the reason for doing the research. So there's two questions for you to answer in order to ensure that your paper is worth publishing or not is, what is the gap in the knowledge of the topic you are planning to work on? And why does it need feeling? If you can answer this question, it means that you are having or you know the significant, the contribution of your research work and it's worth publishing, it's worth sharing. And the second question you need to ask yourself is how your study fill in that gap? In, in answering this question, it means that how you position yourself as a researcher and your research in relation to the other researchers and other study on the topic you would like to do the research on. So if you cannot answer these two questions, um, I think that um, the, the journal's editor or you cannot get your paper uh, accepted uh, for publication in the good journals. So um, for the first point, I learned uh, from my um, uh, writing for publication, especially in the good journals, is uh, that an article without a message is not work publishing. That's what I would like you to remember. It means that if your paper doesn't have anything new to contribute to the literature, it's not work publishing. The journal's editor will not accept your paper for publish because every uh, journal editor would like to publish the good uh, paper, the paper that contributes something new to the knowledge uh, in the literature. If you don't have anything new to share or to contribute to, they will not um, accept it uh, for publication. Okay, so uh, the next part will be about my tips, my strategy that I use in order to update in myself with the literatures in, in, uh, in, in the field or any topic that I did the research on. So for me, whenever I did the research on um, a certain topic, I also use the search engine, as you can see here, Google Scholar, PubMed, or Request Dissertation, or Stanford Search Work, in order to search for the published papers on the topic I plan to uh, study. It means that I'm looking for the existing conversation people on that topic have talked about. And from um, that, I can select uh, the one that related to my uh, research um, interest or um, topic. And as I already shared with you that new knowledge keep being added into the network of the literature on any topic. So that's why in order to make myself updated with the newly or the current state of the knowledge in on that topic, I, I, I myself created the Google Scholar in, sorry, the alert on the Google Scholar. So let me show you how. So um, I think this uh, tool helped me save a lot of time in updating myself with the current state of the knowledge on the topic I would like to research on. And here, let's have a look. So in order to read a clerk on the Google Scholar, you first uh, need to read the profile on the Google Scholar, as you can see here. And here's my profile on the Google Scholar. You can see my affiliation, my publication, and citation uh, on this page. But on the top left corner, as you can see here, you just click here, and you see alert, OK? Click on alert. And you can see a lot of keywords that I put as an alert uh, in order to have the <coughs> sorry to have the newly uh, published paper on the topic I'm, I'm researching on. And at the end of this list, you can see you can read, you can add more alert. So you just click on it, and then you just type the keywords on the topic you are researching on, and with your email, and they will send it to your email uh, whenever. Um, there are new publications on the topic uh, that you are working on uh, release. Because we, we cannot know all of 
the publication from journals around the world on that topic. So that's why by creating the alert on the Google Scholar that help you to have the necessary or the important uh, literatures or uh, updating yourself with the current state of the knowledge on your topic. So let me show you my email that I received the alert from Google Scholar. As you can see here, they keep sending me a lot of alert uh, from my registration. And for some, if I would like to, to check uh, on this topic, English language teaching. So I just opened it and then I check whether which journals is of my relevant. And if I like to read them more, I just simply and uh, download them um, from, from this website. Okay, so that is the, the one of the strategies I use in updating myself with the literatures. And also, uh, sometimes we uh, get the paper, but we cannot download them because we have no subscription to the database. So in order to have the paper um, that we have to pay, but we, we, we cannot afford paying, right? So here are some links I think some of you already know. In order to get the paper by breaking the, the rune a little bit, I think the publisher may not like it, but I think you it helps us a lot, especially in uh, we, we are working in the uh, resource limited environment. It helps us a lot in updating ourselves with the current literatures. So for example, if I would like to read uh, on the topic written corrective feedback, Okay, so you can see that, uh, uh, wait a minute, I would like to add a little bit here. So among the search engines I show uh, from the first uh, point, uh, I like Google Scholar the most. It's just because I do not only have the list of the publication on the topic I am working on, but I also know the, the this number of citations and you can see here. With the number of citations uh, recorded here, I can know which study, which paper is the keys in my topic. And it means that those are the paper I need to read carefully or I need to cite in my uh, paper, okay, because they are the key one. I need to base on the key study in my uh, research. So if I would like to have this paper, okay, let's back to what I'm talking. So if I would like to have this paper, I just look at it and then uh, you can see here, this is published by Office Academic ELT Journal. And in order to have this paper, you need to have at least uh, the member account of this organization and if not you have to pay as you can see here so we cannot afford paying for own papers we need to read so um, that's why I share with you the three link but actually you can use any link you did you look for the paper you would like to have so I just copy and take it from here so here we go we can get the paper we want to read is this the paper we want to read and, and that's what I would like to share with you in in order to to have the related paper, we, we need to read in order to update ourselves with the current uh, state of the literature on the topic. And also uh, for me, in order to have my um, related uh, paper to read, I also use the snow spawn strategy. With this strategy, um, I, I, I just simply I look at the reference list of any uh, paper, for example. I just look at the reference list at the end of any paper published. Uh, on the topic that I read and I check whether they are of relevant to my topic or not and I simply take the link or the name of the paper from here and I share this on the Google Scholars. That's also helped me to save a lot of time in looking for updating myself with the literatures um, on the topic. And uh, also uh, when we do the reading, we also need to focus on the recurring citation. It means that the, the, the references or the, the papers or the book that are uh, cited uh, repeatedly in many papers uh, when you read. So you need to notice them because they are the key one in your topic, on your topic. And also uh, to save your time, you also need to use some um, reference uh, management software in order to re uh, log in, to log the, the reference information of the references you use. Um, and it saves you a lot of time when you do the writing. I uh, currently use the EndNote um, software in order to to do this um, task for me. And uh, when we do the reading, um, we are very busy, right? So how can we do all kind of reading essentially? But we need to do it in the way that we can update it ourselves with the current literatures. We update ourselves with the most recent one with the shortest time. So how can we do it? Actually, we need some strategy in doing the reading in order to collect the related literatures for our research. So how I did it. So usually I, when I download the paper that I thought 
related to my uh, research topic, I check the keywords, the title, the abstract to make sure that they are really necessary for my research topic. If not, I simply put them away because I don't want to waste my time. I don't have a lot of time to read everything in details. And the second strategy that I usually do is that I only read the newly published uh, paper first. As I share with you from the beginning, in order for a paper to be accepted for publication in the good journals, the first and the most important thing they have to do is that to revive the thorough review of the literatures on the topic. And they need to show how they join that network of the literatures. If they did not do that successfully, effectively, their paper cannot be accepted for publication. So that's why I usually read the new newly published paper in a good journal first in order to updating myself with the current state of the literature on the topic I would like to do the research on. And I think that that's what helped me to save a lot of time in um, uh, collecting the literatures related to the research I'm researching on. And um, if I would like to read further, I can read more. But that's the way I think it helped me to save time and I can handle to have a lot of reading in a short time in order to have a lot of research project and a lot of research paper. And also, when I do the reading, I did not highlight because I used to highlight the paper I read. But later, when I did the writing, I, I, I forgot completely why I highlighted them. Uh, what, is, what are they for? And it means that I, I kind of I read them again. So I think it's a waste of time. So for me, uh, whenever I do the reading, I take note. Let me show you how I took note on my reading. Um, as you can see here, uh, this note is for the paper I just got it published in July this year, 2020, on the Scorbut Index Journal. And the topic is Teachers Research, Agency of Practical Knowledge and Professional Growth. And I started from the newest uh, published uh, paper first, and then the older one. And I, in taking note, I even copied the text from the paper because I think that they will be useful <coughs> Sorry. for my writing later. So uh, I, I keep doing it like this. And if the paper that are not very related to my paper, I simply wrote a very short note, like you can see here, I just said, just good to talk about Thai EOT. It's not related to my big topic, a teacher's research. Okay, so in doing uh, this, I mean, in taking note in this way, uh, when I do the writing, if I would like to refer back to the paper, I simply read my note. I do not need to read the paper again, and it saves me a lot of time. That's my strategy in reading. And also, when we do the reading, we need to do um, analytically, yes, we have to do read the research paper one by one, but it doesn't mean that we read them separately. But when we read, we need to stop and to make the connection between them, how they are linked to each other, what uh, uh, similarity or differences they have, or what are the common trend, pattern, or debate, uh, the contradiction uh, they, they have over the, the topic. So by doing that, we are actually situating ourselves and our research in the network of the literatures. We don't have to wait until we do the writing in order to situate ourselves in the literature, but we have to situate ourselves, our research in the literature when we do the writing. We need to know how our study can contribute to the literatures from the writing, not just at the time when we do the writing. I think this is too late. And that's helped me to save a lot of time in uh, um, narrow down or uh, do my research topic or in situating the certificate of my study. Okay, so now let's move on to the second thing that I learned in getting my paper published in the good journals is uh, to tell the story. Uh, what I mean is that after we have the message, message to share, right, it means that we know the certificate of our study, how we can contribute to the literatures, how we share our research story is also very important. Uh, like usually in, in our daily life, when we tell the story, we need the story plot, right? In the story plot, we have the exposition in which the setting, the characters are introduced. And then the conflicts, the thing that the main character would like to fulfill and what the action are, and then the resolution, and then the moral of the story. So exactly uh, the same way to tell the story, we have to apply it in telling our research story. In telling our research story, we also need to update the, the, the readers with the background of our research topic, the literatures of our topic, and how we join, how we contribute to that research. And we also need to mention about the way we contribute to that 
um, literatures and then what we found and how what we found can help the literatures can benefit the literatures so the way we tell the story is exactly the same as the way we tell our research story uh, when we write the research so what i would like to 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 mention here in the second thing that i learned from my uh, writing for publication uh, journey is that make use of the structure to sell the message of your paper so the structure here i think you already know the structure of the research article right in telling the structure in 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 writing the research article i i'm sure that you all know that we need to have title abstract uh, introduction literature review section method research discussion right yes those are the key part but what i need you to remember is the seven point that you need to have in each session okay uh, no the seven point you need to have in your paper uh, in a, a separate session so uh, what i would like you to remember here is that number one to number three is what you need to have in your introduction in your introduction, you need to update the re readers with the current status of the knowledge uh, of the literatures on the topic you are doing the research on, and where you can contribute your um, you can contribute to the literature literature of that topic, and how you could contribute it. Why you need to contribute to that um, literatures, and then what you did in order to contribute to that literature is just the specific thing of your own topic so you can see on the shape is very small one number four the method and then what you found and how you found can help to fill the gaps or the research objective that you set from the beginning and from what you found how you help the people how you benefit the people in the literature or the people on the topic that you are doing the research on. So in writing, uh, in using the structure to sell the message of your of your uh, research uh, story, we need to follow, we need to go from very road to specific and then specific to road. Specific, I mean, is your own, about your own, your specific study. But road means we are talking about the literatures and then how your specific study benefit the literature. Okay, that's the way we 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 the structure we need to make use in uh, telling a research story, and I call it the autonomy of a scientific paper. Okay, and uh, and uh, I, I would like you to move to the next thing that I learned. The third thing uh, that I learned, I think I'm not sure that you can see. I'm not sure that you can see my screen or not with this one okay so and uh, the third thing that i learned from uh, getting my paper published uh, in good journal is that to write the quality uh, research papers um when you have uh, the message to share and the structure to tell your message or to share your research story but the means the language you use in order to tell the story is also very important what i mean here is that you need to make sure that you have the quality of english language use in writing your research paper and i i i think you agree with me that uh, most uh, journals good journals publish a research article in english but publishing a research article in english or writing research article in english is uh, is a challenging thing for us as a multilingual as scholars because english is not our first language right so writing a good research article in english in order to be accepted for publication in a good journal is also uh, a difficult task for all of us especially english language is not our language but we would like to have our paper published in a good journal we need to make sure that our language the language we use to tell our story reach a story is of qualities okay so if not the, the reviewer or the editors may misunderstand uh, the science the significance of our study it means that they would not be accepted for publication it means that they reject your paper not because your paper has nothing to contribute to the literature but just because your language is not of quality so that's why uh, the quality of the English language is very important in getting your paper to be accepted for publication in the good journals. And here are some things we need to remember. When we write our research article, we need to remember that we need to write it clearly, objectively, accurately, and briefly, sharp. And uh, be very careful with very basic and common mistakes people make, like 
grammar structure tenses or spoken abbreviation or typo. And in, from my observation, or even from myself, I used to think that uh, in writing uh, for publication or write, academic writing, we, we need to have long sentences. The longer the sentences are, the more beautiful in our, our writing is. But actually, the reality is opposite. Um, the longer your sentences, the more complicated you make the reader in understanding the message you would like to communicate in uh, your research paper. That's why my advice is that be uh, short and direct in writing your research paper. Okay, and also uh, you may not think that uh, using the citation in text citation is also help you to um, make your paper uh, of qualities. It means that uh, in order to um, strengthen your argument, in order to persuade the readers of the significance of your research finding, you need to make sure that you know how to use the citation effectively. I think if we all uh, know this phrase, right? Standing on the shoulder of the giant, it means that in order for us to um, prove or to uh, persuade the reader about the significance of our study, we need to make use of the voice of the reverse researchers because the reverse researchers are the authority in our field on the topic we are doing the research on. So how we make use of their voice in supporting us, in justifying for what we plan or what we um, believe is the significance of our study is very important. So I think that um, that does also contribute to the quality of our research paper, the effective use of the in-text citations. Okay, so um, I, I think uh, the writing process is also work uh, sharing here because I found that uh, my way of approaching or writing the research paper is effective, at least for me. So usually uh, when I was novice, it means that when I started to write a publication, this is the process I usually follow. After I got my findings, I start to rough my research paper. And after I finish drafting my research paper, I look for the target journal to publish my paper. So then I format my uh, paper and then I submit. But the more I am in this journey, I, 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 I do it in different ways. So let's see how I did. So this is my writing process now. So when I got the fighting uh, for my uh, research uh, project, I did not write immediately, but I need to check at the target journal, what journals that my paper could be fit into. And from that target journal in mind, with that target journal in mind, I have the structures, the guidelines in order for me to wrap my paper. Okay, after I finished wrapping my paper, I did not send it anywhere. I just leave it there. As from the beginning, I told you that I am now having three research paper completed, but I did not send them anywhere. I just keep them with me. Why? I just leave them there and I would read them again in order to do the revision or the root reading before I send them uh, to the journal for publication. And, uh, and before I submitted uh, them to the journal, I one more time check with the journal in order to ensure that I follow their instruction, their requirement or their guidelines. Okay. And, um, this way of writing the paper actually I think very helpful at least for me. Why? Because I, after I uh, wrote the paper for a while, it means I read my paper for after a while. It means that I left it there for a couple of weeks or months, it depends on my availability. And after that period of time, I actually completely forgot or forget what I wrote on that paper. So when I read my paper again, I have a very fresh perspective on what I wrote in that paper. I sometimes make a lot of changes to the paper and I also found a lot of witnesses that I need to, 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 to fix in that paper. So following this way of writing uh, my paper, I feel like I serve a, the reviewer of my own paper before I submit it to the journal. And I think that that helped my paper to, to to, to have the better quality as compared to the original one, the first draft I, I had. And I, I hope that uh, that way of writing could benefit you in some way. And that's, that's my way in writing research article and getting my paper published. Okay, so now let's move on to uh, some tactics I did in order to save my time in writing my first draft. As I already mentioned with you, right, I got the fighting. 
Uh, when I got the fighting, I, I did not start writing immediately, but I kept reading my fighting for many times, as many times as I can. Why? Because the more I read my fighting, all the fighting, all the data I collected, the, the better, the clearer of the meaning I have of my data. And after I read my fighting many times, I, I can see uh, the meaning and then I can see which data that I should use in order to answer the question to, uh, that I have in a specific paper. This means that for each specific paper, we have a specific uh, objective or research gap we need to fill, right? So I, the more I read my uh, research finding, the more I, I mean, accurately I select the, the data in order to answer the research question or the research objective I have in that paper. So after I um, read, my uh, finding and I decide which finding to share in the paper and then I would organize them into some form like table charts or rocks and if I have more than the finding I need for that paper it means that if they are meaningful I can even write another paper from even from a ritual or project it is just one research question for example but later I have maybe two uh, research paper because I found something meaningful from the finding I got so um, with the clear finding in mind, uh, before I start to write the first draft, I, I became very focused in writing my paper because I know the significance of my paper before I start writing. So because I know the significance, the contribution of my paper before I start writing, when I uh, write, I wrote the introduction, I, I know how to situate my significance into the literature. And I also uh, save a lot of time in organizing all the things in, in, my, in each section of my research article. And I think that it helped me to save a lot of time by um, defining what to share in each paper before I start to get started to write. Okay, so now uh, let's move on to the last, uh, the last lesson I learned or the last point that I learned in my um, journeys to, to get my paper published in a good journals. To choose the right journal for the right paper is also very important. Um, there's many journals out there, so which journal fit, uh, which journal our paper fit into is are not easy, or I think it's, it's a tough choice actually, uh, or the, the tough decision to make. So uh, for me, I from the beginning, honestly, I, I didn't know which journal is good, which journal is not good. And if people say that, oh, this is a good journal, I, I myself didn't know how I can verify. But now um, from um, my experience in getting my paper published frequently, I learned something and I developed my own sense of judgment. Uh, in selecting uh, the journals, as uh, you can see here. So first, in order to check whether the journal is up, uh, my uh, is for my paper or not, I check the team, the scope of the journals. But I, I sometimes found that um, if you just read the description of the teams, the scope in the journal, sometimes it's not sufficient, not enough. I one time got the desk rejection. It's just because my the reason they said that my paper is... Uh, not on the scheme or the, the, the team of the journal. Uh, but I was confused. It was just because the journal said that the journal welcome on papers, a research paper in the applied linguistics. My paper, for sure, I'm in the field of applied linguistics. So my paper, for sure, is, uh, uh, is on the field of applied linguistics. So I just simply submitted there, but they rejected it with the reason that my paper uh, did not fall into the scope. And uh, finally, I learned that uh, they said um, their paper welcomed the publication, uh, the submission on the applied linguistics, but actually they focus on specific areas of applied linguistics, not on topics or not on areas of applied linguistics. So in order to ensure that uh, your paper fits into the scheme or the uh, teams or not, you also need to have a look at the paper published on the journal, not just a description on the journals, because sometimes the description, they are very general. Are not specific enough but when you look at the paper they published there you can have the feeling that whether uh, they, they they like or they publish the, the topic of your paper or not and also you need to check the indexing uh, the indexed information on the journal because we are aiming for the high index journal right so in order to uh, make sure that we are publishing or submitting our paper to the good journal. We need to check the index. And before I didn't know how to check, but now, uh, no matter what kind of, uh, I mean, database they claim to be indexed on, I have the way to verify them. I will show them later. I will show you later.
Okay, and another thing that you, uh, I, I, I have as a criteria for me in selecting the journal is to check the editors and the reviewer of the journals. Because when I do the lot of reading for my research on the topic I did the research on, I know who did the, the research on that topic. And before I submitted my paper, I see whether the reviewers there or the editor there research the topic I did or not. And that's one of the, the criteria for me to decide to submit my paper there or not. And also, as I mentioned before, we need to have a look at not only the, the topic of the paper, but we also need to check the quality of the paper published there. Because from my experience, I at times see some journal indexed in the score, but, but the paper published in their journal are not of quality. So I, 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 I believe that um, with such low quality paper, their journal may be sooner or later will be discontinued from the good index database if people reported uh, such low quality to uh, the organization, I mean the database um, indexing organizations. So that's why I, I, I do not want to send my paper there. Okay, and also um, we need to check the publication frequency or duration. Um, for, for me, like I have no pressure with my publication, but if you have the pressure to publish your paper in a certain time, you need to check the frequency of publication. Like for me, I got two papers that took me two years to be released. It was just because, you know, there was a long queue of papers, a long queue of submission there. After my paper was accepted, after six months of submission, I had to wait for another 15 months for it to be released. Uh, so it means that total in the total time, it took about 21 or 22 months for it to be released from the submission. So you, that's what you also need to consider if you are um, under pressure of time for publication. And also the acceptance rate. Uh, if the journal has uh, have the acceptance, high acceptance rate, that's what you need to suspect. Why? It seems like they publish every uh, paper submitted there. But if the journal has the low, as uh, also oh, the high rejection rate, that's also what you need to consider because you know who you are. And uh, if they have the very high rejection rate, it's meant that it's very hard for your paper to be accepted there if you are novice, because there's a lot of good submission there and it's very hard for your paper to be competed with the paper by the experienced uh, writer or scholar submitted there. So uh, that's uh, something we need to consider. Um, okay, um, now, uh, Paying for the uh, publication um, is also one of the criteria we need to consider. If you are um, having the, uh, the grant from the research project, you can pay for your publication. Why not? I don't mean that paying for publication is bad, but we need to be cautious. We need to be very careful because nowadays there's a lot of fake, I would say bogus publication who try to make money from um, novice researchers. That's what I feel. Um, so that's why uh, you need to check to make sure that uh, the, the fee, the money you pay, it worked the effort. It's mean at least you get something in return, like they're indexed in the good database. Okay, and also you need to check the publishers, whether they are trusted one or not, whether they follow the publication ethic or not. Because sometimes they claim that they are indexed in some very good database, but actually they are not. So we have some way to check. So here are the ways we can check whether the indexes uh, claim on the journals are right or not. So for example, if the journal said that they are indexed in the scorebat, so we have to check, yes, whether they are in scorebat there or they already um, we remove or discontinue from the score bus. So for example, uh, from here, you can see the title. The title means the name of the journals. Or uh, you can also uh, search by using the publisher name or ISSN. But I think the title is mean the name of the journal is the easiest one. So for example, I would like to check whether the journal English language uh, teaching is on score bus and our English language teaching. Sorry. Oh. English, not this one. Teaching, okay, this one. Let's see. Okay, it's here. English language teaching. Yes, this one. Okay, let's see. And you can see it here um, by checking whether this, this paper is on, uh, sorry, each journal is on scope or not. We just use this link I just share with you on the screen. And you can see from here, yes, this journal used to be on scope. 
2012-2015. It means that since 2016 until now, they are not discovered anymore. It means that we can check and know the status of the journals, whether they are discovered or not. And we also know that uh, there are four uh, ranking in the discovered index journal, right? Q1, Q2, Q3, and 4. And in order to check the ranking of the journals, you also need to use the Sigmaco uh, link in order to check for a sample of okay, any journals. Let's see how they are ranked here. Okay, so, okay, this one, let's go. Okay, you can see uh, the name of the journal, the homepage, the publisher, all the information here. And then you can also see the ranking here, ECQ3, Quartile 3. Okay, that um, the, the this number or uh, this uh, Q3 is showing the ranking of the journals. It means that I uh, usually Q1 and Q2 uh, scope a journal are uh, hard for novice writer to get the paper published. But for Q3 and Q4, I think possible one for for new uh, writers or researchers. And if we are not very experienced in writing for publication, so why not? Just publish your paper in the low ranking like Q3, Q4, or just scope it. Uh, because scope it means some kind of guarantee that the paper are, or the journals are of good qualities. Okay, so um, if you would like to check whether the journals are in indexed in the web of science or not, uh, so you just click the link here and I, let me show you these journals. Iranian uh, journals of um, Language teaching research, as you can see here, they claim that they are indexed uh, in, in this emerging source of citation. It means it belongs to the web of science and they are Q1 Scobert index journals. So in order to check whether this is true or not, you use this link and you just type oh, okay, it's here, the name of the journals and you can find the information, whether it's there or not. Yes, it's there. Yeah. So it means, yeah, right, what they claim on the journal is right. Okay, so as I also share with you that I got my uh, book chapters published in with the publishers index in the web of science. Uh, when I got the invitation from the book editors, uh, he, he told me that the book will be published with the publisher index in web of science. And I would like to verify this one. And let me show you how. So let's see my book at the chapter of the book I contribute to. So is it the book that I had one chapter in, a knowledge mobilization in TESOS, connecting research and practice. And here's the name of the publisher's real. So in order for me to verify whether what the book editor told me is right or not, I use the link here to check. And you can see here, you see the web of science uh, and publishers, name of the publisher index in the web of science. And I just look for B, Prio. Yes, it's in the, in the web of science. Okay, so that's why I send my uh, chapter to the editors when I got the invitation. Okay, so those are the links we use in order to verify the index, the journal claim in on their uh, journal website. Because sometimes they claim their journals to be indexed with the high impact factor. But when we check on the reliable, the, the international recognized uh, database, we couldn't find them. So that's what we need to be aware of. And another thing that I would like to share with you in uh, finding your journals uh, for your research article is that to make use of the journal directories. So I think uh, this link is very um, useful, uh, the directory of open access journals. By using this link, you do not only know the journals, but also know more um, related research uh, uh, papers that you should read for your topic, for example, you can even show the journal or even show just the keywords, like written corrective feedback, in order to see which journals publish on this topic. And from here, you can see they show you 104 results. And here, you can see not only the paper they published, but also the journals where this paper published. And if you want to know more about this paper, these journals, you, you would like to publish your paper in this journal, you can click here and get to know more about the journal. They, have, they give you all the information about here, publication charges, uh, the editorial board, aims to scope all the information about the journals here. And again, uh, this link have us to know not only the paper published on the topic we are researching, but also the journals. Uh, we can publish our paper um, of the topic on that. Uh, okay, and then uh, I think the following links are, are very useful for you, especially in helping you to match your completed paper with uh, the potential journals. Uh, so in order to do that, um, you simply just 
to okay let me show you okay so here in order to find the best journal for your paper the completed paper okay you simply just put the title of your paper here and then the abstract of your paper okay so let me show you an example this paper is my paper that uh, was already published in the Indonesian journals of applied linguistics. If I have not mistaken, this journal is Scopus Index and Q2 ranking. Okay, so in order for me, uh, for example, if I got the rejection for this publication, publication from this journal, what should I do? Yeah, I just simply use this one, the same one, to search for another potential journal for it. Okay, so I just copy the name of my paper and then the abstract and just pass in here and let's see what the tool suggests the potential journals for me what journal i can get my paper published if that journal rejected my paper okay so you can see here at least i have 15 more journals that may accept to publish my paper if that journal rejected my paper and you can see here you can see not only the name of the journal but you can also see the size score is mean that they are indexed in the scopus and also the impact factor is mean that they are indexed in the web of science and the name of the publisher and how many paper on that topic they have already published or the similar topic to yours paper they have already published on these journals mm -hmm. so you simply click on them and find out more information and then decide whether you uh, publish your paper there or not and another tool that i think is also very uh, similar is this one and i they are the tools that i love the most for this function this one is for you to find the journals for your paper but the journals you are looking for are uh, indexed in the web of science by Elsevier. Okay, you can see here the same, you do the same. You enter the title of your paper and then the abstract, the keyword if you like. So I do the same paper in order to see how these tools suggest me and how different they are with the reverse one. <clears throat> okay, and you can see here, let's see. Oh, okay, they show you 50 the more journals that matching your paper and the same you know the size score the impact factor the acceptance rate the time to uh, touch your paper it means the first time they make the decision on your paper and the time to publish your paper so everything is here you, you just have maybe needs a little bit time to show for which one appropriate uh, for your paper and again the paper you found here are um, published by Elsevier okay it means that they are also listed as good uh, indexing organization okay and uh, the other tools um, tool actually they are uh, they have the similar function but i i refer the first two uh, the last one here this one uh, edam's general selector tool actually they charge you the fee if you use it so i don't recommend it but i just show you on the link that you can use in order to show for uh, the potential journals for your research article and you can also use uh, this uh, website in order to check uh, whether uh, that or a certain journals um, a program for your paper or not, or whether you should submit your paper there or not. So by looking here, for example, you have a checklist. Okay, if you are not confident, you are inexperienced in selecting the journal, you simply answer the question here in order for you to make a decisions on whether you go ahead with that journals or not. So some questions are slide it, you can see here. Do you or your college know the journals? Have you read any articles in the journals before? Is it easy to discover the latest paper in the journal? So if you answer yes to all of the question, it's mean that these journals are, are is familiar um, are popular to people, to you, to your colleagues, and you uh, often see the paper published on that uh, journal. So it means that they are kind of known to people in the field or to people on the topic that uh, you are planning to do the research on. Okay, so uh, I think it's, this website is also very useful. Okay, so now uh, let's move on to uh, some of my suggestions uh, for you uh, in uh, selecting your research, sorry, your journals for publication. Uh, so if you are not confident, as I mentioned before, you need to ask as far, uh, from your colleagues, seniors, researchers, or professors. 
and you need to be realistic about yourself because nowadays there's a lot of uh, bogus um, journals they keep sending bug email to us and um, in order to um, to attract or um, maybe to get our attention they usually flatter it they usually <laughs> attack how not attack they usually uh, they know how to to win our egos by raising us like making us like an expert in the field but we we should know who we are right we are novice we are just uh, stepping one fit uh, one foot into the field how come they make us like we are the expert so that's why i think you need to be realistic about yourself you need to be uh, skeptical to the invitation emails because good journals never send email to invite the author to submit their paper to their journals because author will look up to the good journal in order to win a chance or an opportunity to publish the paper in. So that's why Good Journal never send invitation to um, author. So that's why for me, whenever I receive the invitation from um, any journals, I just simply put them in spam or delete it without thinking. Okay, so I think uh, that's what we also, especially the novice writer, need to be aware of. If not, you are falling in the trap of the bogus journals. Okay, and then uh, for me, uh, in order to have um, to save my time in searching for in searching for which journals I get, I, I send my paper for publication, I read the list. Uh, the list actually I collected along the time uh, when I publish my paper or I come across them in my search, so I just re recorded them. And this list of uh, the journals are on the Boost One Index in Scobat or Web of Science. A database and they are in the field L2, ELT, and Applied Linguistics. And I just updated it in 2020. And uh, you can see here, I have on not only the name and the link of the journal, but I also check the ranking. And uh, when I have any paper to publish, I just simply look at the list of the journals. And then so far, I have, uh, you can see here, 65 journals that I have collected. So it's more than enough for me to publish on my paper. Uh, maybe for long, not just now, okay, because I have a lot of uh, journals, I potential journals I can send my paper to. Okay, and, uh, and the last thing is that, remember that we have no shortcut to publication, especially if we would like to get our paper published in the good journals, because uh, you can see that it's like your time to um, identify, to position yourself in the literatures. Uh, in order to find the significance of your so it takes you time to do the research, it takes you time to write a paper, it takes a journal's time to do the review and the editing uh, things for your paper in order to make sure that your paper is a good one. So um, if you receive any email or any invitation with the impracticals promises like they can publish your paper in one week, two weeks, three weeks, so I think those are the things that we need to be careful about or to be skeptical about. Okay. And as, uh, here are some notes you uh, should um, remember in order to avoid a death rejection. What is bad with death rejection? Death rejection means that you got the rejection without any comment from the reviewer. It means that you waited for maybe one month, two months, three months, four months, and then you receive your paper back without any comment in order for you to know how to, to make it better. So it means that's a waste of your time. So here's uh, some thing that you need to avoid in order to not to get the death rejection. Yes, rejection is okay, but rejection with the comment from the reviewer in order for you to improve your paper, in order to publish somewhere else. If not, it's still the same. You still have no, no idea about how you can make it better. Okay? So I make sure that your journal fix, sorry, your paper fits into the journal and you follow the instruction, you uh, need to revise, uh, you need to read your manuscript as many times as possible. You need to um, act as a reviewer of your own paper in order to ensure that uh, people can also understand your paper and uh, avoid the plagiarism. And uh, as I know that uh, for good journals, they will not accept the similarity indexed uh, up more than or higher than 10%. So that's why you need to be uh, very careful. Don't copy the source three con con continuous work from the original source in your writing. You should uh, paraphrase your your writing in order to avoid the similarity index. Okay, and uh, for me, in order to sell my message to the 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 the, the, um, the editor in chiefs of the journals immediately, I usually uh, have the covering letter, even though the journals uh, ask. Um, me to have the covering letter or not, I do it by myself. 
if I submit my paper through the email, the email is my covering letters. Or if I upload it into the system, it means that I also attach the covering letter uh, into the into my submission. Okay, here is an example of my cover letters. Uh, when I submitted my paper to the journals of Asia, stuff for you see the Q1 uh, scoreboard index journals, and uh, you see that it's very simple. You just wrote the date. And then to the editors, if you know the name of the, the, the editors who handle the main strip, mention their name, if not just the editor of the journals enough. And then a submission of the research article because my paper is the research article. So I write the subject like this. But if you have the teaching article, opinion article, you have to mention here in order for them to classify your paper uh, properly. And you see here in the first sentence, I simply introduce my paper. And the next sentence, I just want to confirm that I haven't sent it out for publication because it's a publication ethic. And the next sentence is just about my research, what it's about. And you see, this sentence is important. This is where I'm selling the message of my research. So in, in having the cover letter, you have the editors, or uh, even the, the handling um, or the managing editor to have a rough idea of the significance of your study in order for them to make a quick decision. And in doing that, you do not waste your time and they also save their time in handling a lot of manuscripts submitted to their paper. So that is just very simple covering letters. Um, I recommended you to have it whenever you submit your paper. Do it by yourself. No need to, to wait for the journal to require you to do it because it's the fastest way for you to communicate with the journal's editor. And uh, here, let's move on to uh, uh, the last part I, I would like to share with you. How we go through rejection and dealing with the reviewer comment. Uh, we are aiming high, right? We are aiming, we are planning to publish our paper in the a good index, uh, it's less high index journals. So rejection is something very obvious. So that's why we need to learn how to accept it, how to go through the rejection. So uh, for me, um, Rejection is uh, another opportunity for me to learn. So that's why I think rejection is my friend. So that's why I think uh, we need to be prepared in order to receive the rejection. Because getting our paper published is difficult, but getting it published in the good index journal is more challenging. That's why publishing is something expected. So that's why we need to be prepared and nothing to feel disappointed if we receive the rejection. But as I mentioned before, at least you get the rejection with the comment in order for you to revise your paper to make it better. Okay, and um, we need to have a look at it to check whether what we should do, what we should improve in order to have another place for it to be published. So that's why no matter what reason the journal give in rejecting your paper, just accept and then learn and then move on. Look for another place, another journal to to, to submit your paper. I'm sure that at the end, your paper will be accepted for publication. Okay. And um, now, uh, how we deal with the reviewer comments. Remember that when you receive the reviewer comment, it is a very positive signal that the journal still interested in your paper, still want to publish your paper. It means that they still appreciate the value of your paper. So that's why we need to handle the reviewer comment carefully, okay? Uh, actually, uh, from my very uh, start of the journeys, I felt very disappointed with the reviewer comment. I, at least two times, decided to throw my paper away. It just because the reviewer comment made me feel like I was a stupid person. I didn't know what I'm doing, and my research was just rubbish. And luckily, I got a friend who was very good uh, experienced with publication and he read the review comment and he told me that, uh, okay, do review. Uh, I'm sure that your paper would be accepted for publication. And he explained to me, he said that one uh, reviewer decide uh, your paper need a major revision. It means that with that comment, with that decision, your paper is about 50 or less than 50% of acceptance. But another reviewer comment and decisions is minor revision. It means that your paper is a worth of about 70% of acceptance. So it means that in total, on average, your paper got more than 50% of acceptance. So that's why he advised me 
to um, revise my paper and resubmit. But at that time, I feel so disappointed. I just put on of their comment away for a couple of days. And then when I feel better, I did revise my paper. And yeah, which was true. It will publish, accepted for publication. So uh, that's what I would like you uh, to learn how to deal with the reviewer comment. As I already mentioned that if the journal asks you to revise, take it as a very good opportunity because the chance is still there for you to get your paper published. Okay, and uh, we, we should, um, as I already share with you that sometimes the reviewer give us very contradictory comment or unhelpful comment and harsh comment. We felt like they did not even read our paper. They did not even understand what we are doing our research. But remember that um, reviewer are also a normal human. Okay, they are maybe busy as busy as us and they try to um, complete their review in a hurry time. So um, just um, treat every comment from the reviewer is the goddest because uh, we should know that reviewer works is um, on voluntary basics right they work without getting any salary from it so we appreciate what they uh, what the effort they they try to comment on our paper and we need to study from their comment whether what they comment is necessary for us to revise in order to make our paper better or not and evaluate whether you decided to to revise or not. If you do not revise because you think that their comments are not very um, constructive or helpful in order to improve your paper, you just explain to them and uh, with the reason that why you decide not to revise according to their suggestion. And then if you think that you need to revise, so revise it. No need to show your anger, your negative attitude to their comment because sometimes we feel like they did not read, they did not even understand what we did in the study. So instead of saying that stupid reviewer, what I meant is X. How come you say Y is something like that? No need. We don't need to say like that. But your duty, your job is that we need to explain our research in a way that even the most stupid person can understand. That's what we need to do. We don't need to show the angle to the reviewer. Okay. And uh, that's what I also learned, uh, actually not easy for me from the beginning, but with the time and from my experience as a reviewer, also as an editor, I, I think that's the way um, we, we are doing, we are practicing in uh, publishing and handling the manuscript. Okay, so uh, maybe the last thing I, I think I would love to share with you just a little bit, one, I think time maybe out, uh, is that how can I get my paper um, like published? Um, in a good journals um, regularly, a couple of papers, at least three papers in a good journals uh, yearly, regularly yearly. So that's why in about six years of publication, I for 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 good, I mean for Scobert and Web of Science index uh, paper only, I got twenty. But in total, I got almost thirty paper, research paper and uh, book chapters uh, published. So how could I do that? Actually. Um, for me, uh, doing research is just uh, for me to learn about my teaching practices. If you read my paper, you can see that most of my uh, research paper are last room research because I, I research my teaching practices. I would like to learn uh, how my teaching could help my student, how my student benefit from my teaching and what I need to improve in order to help my student the best. And that, that's why I only have um, one or maybe sometimes two a research project at home because I usually teach more than one subject at home so I'm researching on what I'm teaching so uh, that's why uh, every time I collected the data of um, actually kind of classroom research data and I keep them there and whenever I have time especially like at the term break or the holidays long holiday I, I write a paper I write uh, my paper on from the data I collected and um, I always uh, like what the common practice people, especially the prolific, right to have. I always have. I always have one paper accepted. At least one paper accepted for publication. One paper uh, is under review, and some people is ready uh, for for submission for example, or, or on the process of writing. Like what I share with you from the beginning. Now I have one paper accepted for publish two are uh, under review and three complete this one. I only have those kind of number uh, of uh, paper with me um, 
almost all the time. So that could be the reason why I, uh, I often, I regular have, I have regular publication um, for, for my research work. And uh, those are what I would like to share with you. So in summary, uh, the key point that I would love to share with you today is, is that in order for your papers to be accepted for uh, publication in the good index journals, we need four things. The first thing is that you need to have the good story to tell in a robust structures with the quality language and submit it to appropriate, or I say that, the right journals. And uh, that's what I would love to share with you today. And um, um, this is my emails, and that's the time for you to ask questions and answer. And if you would like to have my slides, I would like to have further communication with me, you can write to my email. It's my email. Okay. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, um, I'm ready to answer your question if you have a question on my presentation. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Long. That was a huge informative session. And yes, we have around 76 participants, you know, with us. And uh, all, almost all the participants have been waiting with questions. So I think they enjoyed your session. And uh, yes, they have even formed, uh, filled up a form, you know, uh, for, I mean, uh, with questions for you. Well, obviously, we'll uh, get back to their questions now. And let me start with uh, Sophia Siddika. Sophia Siddika asked, after I requested you to uh, show again, how do you highlight information while literature reviewing? While you do your literature review, actually, how you highlight actually the points, the important points? So that was Sophia Siddika's question. Uh, so uh, let me uh, rephrase the question. She would like me to know how I highlight literature. But actually, I did not highlight in my sharing. I said that I did not highlight in my reading, but I did take note in the reading. Uh, yes, I cannot share sure that uh, uh, note taking is important other than highlighting every time everything because we sometimes miss the information if we highlight, then we actually couldn't connect also sometimes. So, mm -hmm. note taking is important. I think you shared this in one of your slides. Yeah, that's what I said. Actually, uh. we should not highlight, but we need to take note. Uh, excuse me, Afroja, madam, can I have a question? Uh, yes, of course. Please um, give your name and then please ask me a question. Uh, uh, very good evening, Dr. Lohn. Uh, thank, you. thank you for, uh, for your very long but informative and interesting presentation. Thank you very uh, much. Uh, uh, let, let me introduce myself. This is Paran Chandra Barman. Uh, I'm an uh, English teacher in an university. Uh, uh, I have two questions. Uh, how important is the reference section in a research paper uh, to get it published uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a high impact journal? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, is there any guidelines for the uh, number of references uh, in a journal? Or how should I know that this number of references is enough? this number of references is not enough. Okay, uh, second question. Uh, in this structure, you showed uh, uh, two pyramids, uh, one on top but upside down, uh, broad, broad and specific and then broad. Uh, if you could just uh, elaborate a little more about uh, that structure, uh, that would be interesting. Okay. okay. Okay, thank uh, you for your uh, question. Uh -huh. Okay, so let you. me... Uh, I had one more question. Should I proceed? Okay. Let's uh, I, think, I think two questions would be enough because, be enough. Uh, you okay. know, yes, there are participants who are waiting with the questions. So, <laughs> long, can you please uh, proceed with thank the you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Okay, so uh, let me uh, talk a little bit about your first question about the Reference. number of of references yes, at the yes, end yes, of your research yes. article, right? So, from my experience, I, I don't think uh, that the number of the references is important, but the quality of how you cite, what you cite in your paper is more important. And actually, when people look at the list of the references on your paper, they just would like to see what short stuff, the reading material you have, whether you got the reading material from the reliable journals or not, the good journals or not. Because good journals would like to publish the paper and the related sources from also the good one. 
they they even require us to remove the references we use. Uh, those are from the bogus journal, like the the kind of fake journal or the journal that jacks a lot of high fees. You know, so that's 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 why my answer to your question is that the quality of your paper, or we have no rule about how many references we need to have in our paper, but the quality of how you refer, how you cite the literatures is more important, and where the literature is from is more important. Like you cite the literature, the the, the references from the the good journal, the reputable journal, or not the sources or not, if not. It's may influence on your paper, but I don't think that the number of the citations is important. And we don't have actually the clear or the, the clear number or the clear, um, how do we say the cut off number of the references we need to include in any paper. But um, yeah, depend on how you argue, how you make use of the references inside your paper, not not on the the list at the end of your paper. I don't think that has any effect on that. But for sure, uh, where you what the references are also very important. I mean, that which journals you got it from are very important. I myself were requested to remove some of the references I used in my paper because just because they were published by bogus journal for them for that journal. You know, the journal editor required me to remove them because for them, those journals are bogus. That's it. So I, I that's why I I myself believe that no, we don't have any cut off number of the references we have to include in our paper, but how you cite, how you make use of the references in your own writing is important. And I also mentioned about that a little bit in my sharing. Okay, now do you, do you think that I answered your first question? Yes, uh, I did. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yeah. thank you. Okay. Thank let, you. Let, me, let me go back to um, the, the slide that you would like me to verify, right? I need to share again, is it? Let me share my screen again. Mm. Okay, this one. Uh, this slice, right? Is it this slice? This one, yes. Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. Yes, so, yeah. what I would like uh, to share here is that in 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 using the structure in order to sell our message, in order to show people the significance of our study, right? We need to start from road to Pacific and then Pacific to road. What I mean here is that we start from talking about the literature, the existing literature, like you can see from number one, two, three here. Like we start with the existing knowledge people know about the topic and what is not known about the topic. We need to move closer. And what is not known is mean that's the place where you fill in, where you can join in in order to fill in the missing part. It means that what you do in the research will fill in what is not known in the literature. So it means that you make it closer, smaller, but more specific. It means that you are move, moving from very general one. It means you are talking about the current status of the knowledge on the topic you are doing the research. And then you are moving to your specific focus in your paper what you need to do in order to fill in the missing part what is not known in the literature so you see number two what is the gap you want to fill and why you need to fill and you see one two three one two three is mean it's equivalent to the number i explained on the size on the right hand side you can see that okay and then now number four is very small one here Actually, I mean that it is about the research method. And for the research method, you are mainly talking about your own specific research method only. So it's specific for your own research, not for everyone or every other research. But when you talk about the literature, it means that it's broad. Many researchers have done on that topic. But when you talk about your own, this is a very small thing here, number four. And then from what you did, what you found, and how what you found contribute benefit back to the literature. Literature means you go back to the wider one. Oh, I say that the role. You, you understand what, what I would like to say here? It means that in writing our paper, we're starting from the role one and then to the specific 
information about our own research only. And then from what we found from our research only, we need to explain, we need to justify, we need to revise the significant how such finding can contribute, can benefit the literature. Well, uh, in relation to this, Lon, I'd like to uh, add actually, one other participant, Wahidul Islam, he also has a question similar to this. I mean, the way you were answering the question, that's why I wanted to interrupt you. Well, he mm -hmm. asked, being a new researcher, how uh, a person can check whether he or she is in the right track of the research or not, actually. He asked this question. Uh, how can, sorry, can I, can I have the question repeated? Yes, well, as a new researcher, how, uh, can I, how can I check that whether I am in the right track or not, actually? And the right track of what? Yeah, right track of the research, actually. What I, was, uh, what, what I am looking for. Um, I don't understand whether she means the right track is about the research methodologies or about what? Maybe actually, uh, yes, I think he was focusing on the methodology, uh, whether the methodology was appropriate to, I mean, look for that particular thing which he or she wanted to find actually or uh, look after, whatever you say. I mean, but how I, a, person, a new researcher would actually start if you, ask, uh, if you answer this? Um, I, I, I myself maybe uh, understand her question in different way. Maybe the right track, actually, when we first heard the question, I refer it to the methodology. But actually, I think she may ask about how she can find the right topic to do the research. Is it what she really want to, to know? Or, but because how can she know she are on the right track? The right track of what? Because we do the research according to our, our interest, right? Or our need. Like we would like to learn about this or that. So what we would like to learn about, we need to know already, right? So whether maybe this is the right track for her, but not for me. Or maybe is it the right track for me? It's been the right topic for me, but not for her. So that, that's why it's not easy to answer whether she's uh, doing uh, the right topic or not. But I think when I first heard uh, about her question, I feel like, oh, she would like to ask about the research method. Because what that topic, how we can reach it, it maybe that's the right track or not that's what i can answer but actually if she asked that question i i feel like she would like to know how can she know that the topic she's researching in right or not i'm not sure i understand I that's why not. you mentioned about keywords actually uh, uh, looking for reading resources to keywords actually would make us specific actually would help us to be specific regarding our research okay so uh, for me when i share about uh, when I share about my reading strategy, right, in order to serve my time, I usually use this one, this one, this one, right? okay, this one, I think that's what she would like to know, right? Okay, so, uh, for example, uh, I, I did research on written corrective feedback, right? So, uh, and I, when I found a paper on that topic, but sometimes, you know, they are on the topic, but they are focused on different aspects of the research area I would like to research on. So in order to make sure that I don't waste my time reading the paper that are not very relevant to my topic, to my small area of research. So I check the keywords, I check the title, I read the abstract enough to see whether I can benefit from that reading or not. If I think that, yes, I may get some information, some useful information from that reading. So I continue reading. If not, I just put it away. That, that's what I, I share in my reading strategies. Because we, we are busy, we don't have a lot of time to read everything from beginning to the end and then we see, oh, it's not related and kind of wasting our time. So that's why I have some kind of um, uh, step in order to ensure that I don't waste my time reading something not very relevant by checking the keys work, checking the title, checking the, the abstract in deciding whether I can benefit the reading or not and whether I, it works uh, my reading time or not. That's it. That's what I share in, in this one. I'm not sure that I answer her question or not. Um, yes, I think, uh, yes, I think, because I, uh, the time is too short, you know, and we have so many questions to address. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. And uh, another question uh, was from Muhammad Ishtia. He mm -hmm. asked, which format should we follow, MLA or APA? I mean, which one is worldwide recognized? That was his question. Um, for, for me and uh, from my experience, actually in the, so, the field of social sciences, we follow the APA. But uh, you know, for, for some journals, they still have their own 
references in the referencing style. So that's why I, I cannot say that which one is better, but which one you need to follow depending on which journal you would like to submit your paper to and what they require you to follow. You need to follow that no matter yeah. what. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what I can say. But in the field of social sciences, actually APA, the, the common uh, reference, uh, commonly used uh, reference, uh, yes. referencing style. Yes. Yeah, that's my and, answer. And uh, will the last question, which uh, we will take is from Ifat Rebecca Brishti. And uh, she asked, what should be our main ethics or focus while publishing a journal? Uh, excuse me, can I, can I hear the question again? What should be our main ethics or focus when publishing a journal? When publishing a journal, what is the main ethic? Yes. What ethics actually do we need to follow? Is there any importance to follow or maintain any particular ethics or not while publishing a journal? Um, for the publish for the publication ethic, actually every journal hall have already stayed on their website, right? But as an author, so uh, what ethic we need to follow? Actually, the ethical issue that we need to uh, confirm to during the, the the time we do the research, not in the time we do the the submission or the getting our paper pu for publication. That's what I think. It means that when we collect the data, how we collect the data, do we force the student to be our participant or to to join our research? So no kind of the ethical issue, right? But in getting our paper for publication, I just think that. We simply um, report our research and then we try to get them published and then um, we just follow the, the guidelines given by the, the, the journals we would like to publish our paper on. So those are the things we need to follow but for sure the journal has some ethical um, ethics for us to follow like this and that but actually uh, they are similar but not actually the same but they have the rule for us to follow. I don't think that that's a very uh, strict thing that we need to be uh, pay special attention to in getting our paper to publish in the journals. Well, uh, we received these questions and some more actually to the form, to a particular form, which we provided at the beginning. And uh, now the floor is actually open. So if anyone wants to ask any question to Dr. Lone directly, you can ask. Um, hello, I would really like to act, ask Dr. Lone a question. May I proceed? Okay, please. Yes. Yes. Sure. Yes. So um, the thing is, uh, what has been recommended first, you know, uh, for primary researchers, we might be afraid to uh, publish on peer-reviewed journals. So uh, in that case, if if a researcher uh, tries to attempt to uh, publish in the non-peer-reviewed one, ultimately, will this affect the researcher's credibility later? That's a one question. And my other question is, how do we discern the uh, bogus uh, journals from the um, non-bogus? Those are my two questions. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, one more time. Uh, the first question is about publishing your, getting your paper sure. published. The first question, yes. The, my first question was, if a, research, if a, if a rookie researcher uh, wants to publish a research, uh, their research in the non-peer-reviewed researches, will this affect his or her credibility later as a researcher? Or do you always prefer to, uh, uh, for us to always go for the peer-reviewed researchers, the one with the higher ranking in the Scopus, uh, etc.? That's my first question. Okay. Okay, so let me answer the first question and then yes. we put the second one. I forgot the second one already. Okay, so say, say it again to me later. Okay, so uh, for your first question, uh, what kind of, I mean, journal we need to get our paper published, right? Uh, the peer review one or the non peer review one? Um, for me, uh, which journal you would like to publish is also depend on the quality of your paper. You know the quality of your paper. If you think that your paper is good, why not try in the high one? The high, the high, I mean that the high quality one is meant that the peer review one. Try it first. And then if you got the rejections, maybe um, you may decide to publish in the non-review one, but at least you, you try the first one, the better one, in order to have some experience, in order to give it a try, in order to see whether, how it works there. So you lose nothing in trying the good index journal or the peer review journal, right? Why not trying? 
For sure. I see. Thank you so much. The non the, the non peer review is not is of quality is a peer review one for sure. So why don't you try the good one first, and then if you got rejected, it means that you may see that um, where your paper stand. It means the quality of your paper. So now time for you to get the lower one. So go with the lower one later. Why not? Okay, thank you, Dr. Lone. My second question was, uh, how do we discern or differentiate between the uh, the credible uh, journals and the non-credible journals? Is there is there was the, is there any way to find that out? Um, so um, actually, uh, when you would like to publish your paper at with a specific journal, right? You need to check the index, the index information. Okay, to see where they are indexed or they, they, where their journals are indexed. So with that information, you can further check with the link I share in my, in my uh, sharing. So uh, that's the way we verify whether the journal is reliable or not. And uh, one thing that I on also mentioned in my sharing is that if you receive the information from the journal who invited you to publish your paper, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they are not real one. They are not. The, the academic one, or I think that they are fake one. That's, that's what I, I really um, am confident about. So uh, that's also the, the way we can recognize whether the journals are good or not. Because as I, I already explained in my presentation, the good journal never send invitation to people because they know that people will look up to them, to look for the opportunity to get their paper accepted for publication. No reason for them to send the invitation to, to invite you to submit your paper. So that's, that's maybe the very easy way for you to recognize whether the journals are reliable or not. But actually nowadays we have a lot of journals out there. So which journals you would like to publish? If you are new, you do not know which one and which one. So as I advise that you should talk to your senior colleagues or maybe his professor or maybe uh, any scholar that you trust and you can ask them for their opinion whether should you go with that journal or not. And actually you can also find out whether the journals is good or not with uh, some information they post in, in their website and you can verify what they post there in order to make the decision by yourself that whether they are good or not. I cannot say they are good or not because nowadays there's a lot of journals out there. In order to say which journal is good or not, I need to look at them in order to see their paper published there, in order to see a lot of uh, things that I share in my slide, remember, in, in, in making a judgment on whether that journal's uh, relevant on work, our publication or not. So I, I think that we need to, to, to learn through the process actually. And uh, if you are not very confident, just ask someone who is feeling. Uh, you, you can follow the, the link that I share, like checklist, right? Answer the question there and you can feel that whether uh, the journals is um, worth your attention or not. And I'm not sure that I answer your question, but uh, that's what yes, I... Yes, I guess, yes, you tried. Yeah, and okay. uh, we'll uh, finally, uh, Istia, Mr. Istia raised his hand. Probably he wants to say something or maybe he wants to ask you a question. So Istia, are you here? Okay, please welcome. Muhammad, yes, yes, I'm here, madam. Okay, please proceed. <clears throat> Hello, uh, actually, uh, I had a question uh, and I got the answer. Okay, I don't have any question. Okay, thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Professor Dr. Loon, oh, for your nice you. presentation, madam. Oh, thank you very much. I'm not yet a professor, just call me Loon or Dr. Loon. That's okay, enough. okay, okay. I got the point, madam. Yeah, thank you. Well, any, any other question? The last question, probably, because we are already. Uh, it's already 8.14. Yeah, I have a very small question. Yes, please. Very quick. Uh, Dr. Okay. Uh, this is an moment from leading university, Silet, the English department. So Dr. Lone, uh, could you please suggest a good book we can follow? <clears throat> uh, excuse me? Could you please suggest the name of a good book we can follow for writing a good research paper? Uh, you mean the book for writing research paper? Yes. 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 Uh, actually, we have uh, a lot, but I I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure. The one that. you like most. The one you like most. Uh, actually, I I read a lot. Actually, my field in uh, writing for publication. Actually, the field of journal analysis. 
Russell, I read a lot of book, but um, a specific book that help the writers to, or maybe the novice writer to write. Maybe I need to check. I have a lot of book, but I'm not sure that which one uh, will be uh, suitable for you. But yeah, if you would like, you can email me with the email. I sure, sure, that would be lovely. So I, I will, I will, I will send you the book. Actually, I have some of them, and actually. Uh, writing a publication is kind of my major actually is my topic uh, for my PhD study so that's why I I have a lot of book about that but I I need to check which book may be appropriate for you maybe you need to okay. introduce a little bit about what you are looking for so I may send yes. you a book of your benefit okay, okay. Thank, thank you me. very much email me, email me. Yeah. questions thank you Dr. Long well, uh, you would be glad to know that uh, not only teachers actually from various parts of the country, but also uh, there are a lot of students who have uh, attended the session today. They have been enjoying since the beginning. So, yes, it's great, you know. We have students along with the teachers in the session. They are upcoming teachers, you know. Well, uh, at this moment, uh, we'll... Uh, uh, our association, TESOL Society of Bangladesh, actually is welcoming new members. So at this moment, I'd like to request one of our very active members, SM Atipur Rahman, to provide some details regarding our membership. So Api, would you like to please share something regarding our membership with the participants? Uh, thank you, Miss, for this opportunity. Welcome. Uh, First of all, I would like uh, this uh, opportunity to thank everyone, all the participants and our research person, Dr. Loon, for this uh, interactive and nice uh, presentation. And I will especially thank the participants. It was a very interactive uh, I mean, uh, session with lots of questions and answers. And uh, I can see lots of uh, messages here uh, actually thanking Dr. Loon and appreciating I mean, the presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you're, you're always welcome. And we also uh, would like to, I mean, see you in our association in future as well. Yeah, I, I look forward to. Thank you very much. We also look forward to. Uh, <clears throat> apart from that, uh, as Tiamen said, that we have actually started uh, 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 collecting members. Uh, you can <coughs> actually join as a member. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with the details here. But what we can do, you can actually follow our Facebook page and I mean Facebook group. That will be I mean better. All the documents and I mean procedures are uploaded there. If you are not following our Facebook page, please follow Tesol Society of Bangladesh. Just search in your Facebook Tesol Society of, uh, of Bangladesh. It's there, and all the informations regarding membership are there. But this is uh, something I would like to mention that we are giving an offer right now uh, to be a life member. I mean, we have started the campaign uh, two days back. And to be a life member, you need to pay uh, 3,000 taka, I mean, in Bangladeshi currency. And this is for a limited time, actually. I mean, we are hoping to uh, take this opportunity or this campaign uh, for first 200 members. After that, I mean, uh, We'll go to our regular, I mean, uh, price. So I uh, invite everyone that uh, please take this opportunity and uh, please be a member because in the last few months, this is our 10th actually webinar. I mean, in uh, we have started in uh, June. Uh, so June, July, August, and this is September. In four months, we have uh, this is our 10th webinar and also I mean, we are uh, trying to come up with lots of other things. This platform will be helpful for your professional growth and obviously for other things as well. So I would like everyone, I would welcome everyone to be a member of this organization. Thank you. Up to Tina Lam. Thank you. Thank you, Atikur Rahman. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, all the audience. You know, we have... Uh, not only Bangladeshi audiences, but we also have audience outside Bangladesh. That's because of you alone. And uh, thank you for, for being a friend. Thank you so much. Thank you for accepting our request. And uh, well, actually, the session was an insightful one, of course, for sure. And uh, definitely, uh, if uh, we are going, uh, if uh, we actually are uploading this on our YouTube uh, channel, you know, people definitely are going to be benefited for sure. And uh, thank you, Dr. Lone. Thank you, everyone. 
we wish to have you uh, one more time in future loan. Yeah, my pleasure. I should be looking for the opportunity. Thank you very much for including me and thank you very much for all of you to participate in my uh, sharing session today. And I hope that my sharing session is of some benefit to you. Actually, those I share are just from my personal experience. So, uh, that is okay, perfect. thank you everyone. I mean, uh, on behalf of the President of the Society of Bangladesh, Dr. Saito Rahman, I thank you again, all the participants and uh, I'm a business person. Thank you. We are concluding the program.